Um, I'm Kath, welcome to my YouTube channel Made by Kath Crafts. Today I'm filming a slightly different vlog. Um, instead of talking about my fabric haul and what plans I'm making for sewing, I'm going to be talking a bit about me and I'm answering some questions that you guys have asked. So I posted um, 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 on Instagram and also I asked in my last vlog if you had any questions about me and sewing and um, thanks to everybody who answered. Um, I've got a list of questions and I'm going to go through them today, so here we go. Before I start answering questions, one thing I wanted to talk about was what I'm wearing today. So today I'm wearing this blouse, which is the pattern, the blouse by the Avid Seamstress. And it's one of my favorite pat bl blouse patterns. It's got um, these really lovely elasticated cuffs and it's got a mandarin collar. Um, and I made a couple of versions of this. Um, I'm also wearing a skirt. I'll just jump up here so you can see. It's the Brumby skirt by Megan Nielsen. And I've made it in a quite sturdy denim. And it's, it's really um, nice for winter because it's really chilly today. It's raining outside at the moment. Um, the reason I'm wearing this particular um, outfit, or particularly this blouse, is um, it's inspired by the Great British Sewing Bee this week. So I'm really enjoying the Great British Sewing Bee. I don't know whether you're watching, but this week the topic for the Sewing Bee was holidays. And the first challenge was to make a pair of palisade pants, which are a sort of high-waisted, fitted at the waist pant, which then flows out, and then they were designed by Coco Chanel originally. And one of the candidates on the Sewing Bee actually used this fabric um, to make his palisade pants. So I was really excited to see this fabric up there. It's a Liberty Tarnal Lawn and it's lovely and flowy. And um, so I thought, oh, I'll get my um, blouse out of the wardrobe inspired by that. So that's what I'm wearing today. So let's get started on the questions. Um, the first question, which I thought was a good one to start with, was how long have I been sewing and why did I start sewing? So I've been sewing for 18 months now. And before that, I'd been knitting for about a year. Um, I knitted this cushion, I knitted some doll's clothes, a couple of cardigans for my daughter, and I'd really enjoyed it. But I wanted to expand my crafty activities and some, try something new. So I thought dressmaking would be a, a great, great place to try. Um, so, um, and why? Um, why dressmaking? Well, I have two small children. Um, I've got a son who's six and a daughter who's four. And I'm a stay-at-home mum, and I've um, spent a lot of time over the last few years um, crawling around soft play, um, getting dirty, um, wearing holes in jeans, um, feeding, so I kind of stretch my tops. Um, and I, my wardrobe was looking pretty shabby. Um, and I used to go to work, and I used to enjoy wearing nice clothes to work. And I felt like I was kind of missing out on that bit of me, just feeling a bit nicer. So I thought I'd try dressmaking and I thought it would be a good opportunity to be able to make some clothes for myself that fit well but also comfortable and practical for my life as a mum. So that's why I thought I'd give it a go. The next question is quite a tricky one for me to decide on which is what are my favourite patterns and why? So I thought about this long and hard and eventually um, I came up with one woven and one stretch pattern that were, I would say are my favourites. So starting with my favourite stretch pattern, it comes from this book here which is the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. Um, and it's a great book for beginners starting out in stretch fabric. I really recommend it. Some lovely patterns in here. And the pattern that's my favourite one is this one here, which is the Freya sweater and dress. So the Freya, um, it's, uh, yes, it's top and dress. Um, it's close fitting and it comes with three different necklines. So I love that flexibility. A mock neckline, a um, fold over neckline and also a cowl neckline. Um, which are all lovely and I particularly like the mock neckline um, and so yes it either comes a fitted top with long sleeves or a, um, a dress which kind of flares out into an a-line and I've made both and I'll put up a couple of pictures of different frays I've made um, but yeah I just it's a great pattern firstly tilling the buttons pattern is always so clear um, to use um, but fray are particularly like because I just feel it goes with everything um, with jeans with, du with dungaree dresses and with skirts it just really works with lots of things and also, I find it, it's quite a quick, satisfying sew. In particular, the neckline. Um, the neckband's a really easy one to put in um, because, it, because it stands up um, as a neckline. You don't need to worry about getting um, the kind of more of a dipped neckline to sit flat. It goes in really um, easily and straightforward every time. So it's a great pattern um, for a fairly new um, sewer to sewing stretch. Um, and, it, and it looks really effective too. So that's my favorite um, stretch pattern is Freya by Tilly and the Buttons. Now, I found the, um, my favourite woven pattern even trickier to decide because there are so many lovely um, woven tops and dresses I love. Um, but eventually I narrowed it down to one, which is this one here. And it's the Fringe Dress by Chalk and Notch. Now, the reason I've chosen this pattern as my favourite um, woven pattern is firstly, the instructions are really great and I feel really comfortable using them. They talk you through every process really clearly. Um, and secondly, because it's got so many lovely details, I really like. Um, I'll show you the different options, 
but basically it's got a, a bodice which is which doesn't it's not a fitted bodice it's, it's a bit looser but it's got some nice shape to it and you can either do a sort of a, a bit of a pretty unusual neckline like that or buttons and it has the button sleeve details and then a gathered waist which can either turn into a top or a dress so i've made a few versions of this and i'll put a couple of versions up on the screen again so you can see what i've made um, but yeah, it's, it's a great pattern. I feel it's really flattering. It's really comfortable um, And, um, and it's, there's lots of different variations you can make which can means every version you make can be a little bit new unique So um, that's my favorite um, woven pattern The next question I had which I thought was a really great question is how quickly or how many projects before I started sewing with nicer fabrics um, So yeah, that is a tricky one. I, mean, I do love um, some of the nice fabrics you can get online This is um, obviously a Liberty um, Tana Lawn, which I got from Guthrie Garni and I have sewn with the Telia Brunette and some Mind the Maker fabrics and some fabrics that are lovely quality and it can also be a bit pricey. Um, but I didn't start with those fabrics by any means. Um, so I thought I'd talk about this again um, from a jersey and a woven perspective because my approaches um, were slightly different with each of those fabric types. So firstly, jersey fabric. My first um, proper dress making project was actually um, a jersey dress and it was a simplicity pattern. It was kind of like a, t a sort of fitted t-shirt top with a sort of gathered um, waist skirt. And I'll put up a picture of my first version and this I kind of treated as a toile and I um, actually to make that used a, an old jersey bed sheet which was navy and um, I thought I'd go with the bed sheet because I'd read online that stretch fabrics can be a bit tricky when you're starting out with them and so I wanted to use something that I didn't really mind if I wrecked um, so yeah that's what I used um, and I did make some quite a few mistakes and it was a big learning curve um, making the first jersey project but I really enjoyed it and actually what I learned from it the most important thing I learned I think was that um, actually the fit of jersey can be quite forgiving because it's stretchy and so that made me relax a little bit about what fabrics I chose. I thought well actually um, you know as long as I can get the fit approximately right it should turn out okay um, because of the, the stretch. So um, for my second version I chose a slightly nicer fabric um, and, um, and I had a go with that and it came out well and I'll put a picture up of that too and then after that I was kind of confident enough to pick and choose what fabrics I liked from a jersey perspective. That was my plan on that one. For woven fabrics, I was conscious when I started um, sewing them that the fit, the fit was more critical because um, there's no stretch or give. So um, what I decided to do for my first couple of projects um, for woven fabrics was to pick garments that didn't, where well, the fit wasn't too critical. Um, so for example, I picked a dungaree dress that was fairly loose in style, um, which I'll talk about a bit later. And what I used those first projects for, for was to, well, create nice garments still, but equally hone my sewing skills a little bit before I moved on to more fitted garments. From there, I moved on to more fitted garments, um, things that required darts or zips, buttons, that sort of thing. And, and once I'd had a go of that and was feeling pretty confident, I then started using some nicer fabrics. But to start with, I used fairly inexpensive fabrics that I wasn't too worried about spoiling if they didn't come out right. So that was my plan with woven fabrics. So it took a little bit longer to get to the point of using those nicer fabrics. Um, also with woven fabrics, I started off with um, fairly stable wovens like um, corduroy and cotton before I moved on to slippery fabrics like viscose which require a little bit more care and a little bit more experience I think so that that's how I, that's why um that's my approach I took there the next question I was asked was what sewing pattern would you recommend for a beginner and also what sewing pattern would you recommend for someone looking for a bit more of a challenge so the pattern I recommend for a beginner which links quite nicely into the previous question is this one here it's the Clio Pinafore by Tilly and the Buttons and this was the first woven pattern that I tried um, what I like about the, this pattern is, firstly, it's made by Tilly and the Buttons, and Tilly and the Buttons, I find their instructions always very clear, with lots of colour photographs, which makes it really easy to follow, and they include lots of tips, and also explanations of different sewing techniques. Clear is particularly good, but firstly, as I said earlier, it's not too fitted, so you don't need to worry too much about the fit, as long as you follow the general size guidelines. And secondly, there are lots of opportunities for learning little bits of new things, so you can kind of... Um, kind of up your skills as much as you really want to. For example, you can add pockets and you can try um, top stitching in a contrast thread. Um, and so that, that kind of means you're kind of learning a few new skills, but with a fairly comfortable pattern that should turn out pretty well. So that's what I'd recommend for a, um, a beginner, this pattern, um, Clio Pinafore by Tilly and the Buttons. For, a, um, for someone who's like looking to up their skills or looking for a little bit more of a challenge, the pattern I recommend is this one here. This is the day dress by the Avid Seamstress. Now, um, this was the first Avid Seamstress pattern I did, and it was also, um, I think, the first pattern I did that, um, that included skills such as inserting woven sleeves, it has an invisible zip, 
um, gathering of a woven skirt. So there are lots of skills you can learn from this pattern. There are three options, as you can see, and I've made this option a couple of times, and I'll put up a picture of one of my versions, but you can also add buttons down the front if you want, and I've seen some lovely versions like that. And what I like about this pattern, and why I think is a good one if you're looking for challenges, there are lots of techniques involved, but equally, the instructions are really good and very comprehensive. So they really walk you through everything and include lots of ins lots of information. And there's even an online tutorial, which I also use, which has some colour photographs as well. So um, I think that's a really great one um, if you're looking to up your skills. Um, it comes out really well and I think it's one of those dresses that you can dress up or dress down. So it's quite a useful one to have in your, in your um, pattern stash, as it were. So that's what I'd recommend. The next question I was asked, which is quite a tricky one, is what are my favourite um, online shops buying fabric? So uh, there are quite a few online shops I love to support, um, but I've kind of compiled a short list of some of my favourites and I'll tell you about those and why I love them. Um, and the first one is Sew Me Sunshine and I'll put a link below, I'll put a link below to the website. Um, Sew Me Sunshine is run by Harriet, um, who's lovely, and what I really love about Sew Me Sunshine is the range of fabrics offered. Um, Harriet stocks so to some designer fabrics like Atelier Brunette and The Mind The Maker. She also stocks dead stock fabrics, which come from, um, I think, um, high street chains and designers that have, um, have extra fabric left after their run of clothes. And she stocks lots of environmentally fa friendly fabrics like Tencel, and also just a great range of other fabrics too. So I always find when I go on Harriet's website, Semi Sunshine, that there's such an amazing um, um, variety. There's always something that always gonna take your fancy. Um, and she's very knowledgeable about where all the fabrics come from and really helpful if you have any questions about them. So I'd really recommend Sew Me Sunshine. The next online fabric shop I'd recommend is Material Girl Laura. And um, that's run by Laura, who again is really lovely. And my particular favourites on Laura's website are firstly her printed viscose fabrics. She's got, always got such a beautiful range of viscose fabrics and they're very reasonably priced too, I think. And she also has a lovely range of printed jersey fabrics. And she's even recently started um, um, a kid's jersey range as well. So there's lots of tempting fabrics, very reasonably priced, always um, shipped really super fast. I really recommend Material Girl Laura, and again, the link's below if you want to check her out. The next website I frequent a lot is it's a bigger company, and it's Minerva.com. Um, and it's um, Minerva, they stock a huge range of crafting, um, crafting supplies, but what I particularly like on their website is the haberdashery items. They have a huge array of buttons, zips, elastic, all those kind of go-to notions you need for your project. So I often go on a Minerva um, for haberdashery items to be able to get those for a few projects. And what I like about a Minerva as well is they have free delivery if you spend over £20. So I think that's quite reasonable. Um, and it's quite easy with once you've got a few notions for a few projects to get to that point of um, not needing to pay for delivery and to get a whole load of um, yeah bits and bobs that you need for your project. So I'd really recommend Minerva for all those haberdashery items. And they do also stock some lovely um, fabrics too and a huge range of patterns. Two more websites I wanted to mention. Um, one is for jersey fabrics particularly, which is Lily and Mimi Fabric Shop. I've got some lovely jerseys from there. Again, reasonably priced, huge range of kids and adult jerseys, um, lots of temperature on there, all types of jersey fabrics catered for. And the other one is Guthrie Garni, which I mentioned earlier, this fabric that this blouse came from. Um, and I love Guthrie Garni for its top quality fabrics. They have a whole liberty range and a beautiful range of other fabrics. And whenever you um, buy something from Guthrie Garni, you can always be assured it's going to be um, really high quality. And they're also very knowledgeable about their fabrics. So I've emailed them before to ask about things. And they, they always come back very quickly and um, with, with really handy answers and really helpful. So I really recommend Guthrie Garni too. The next question was, do I prefer printed patterns or PDF patterns? And that was a really easy question. I'm definitely a printed pattern girl. Generally, what I like to do when I get a new pattern and I want to decide what size I'm going to make and how I'm going to make it, I usually look on the back of the pattern um, for the sizing and then I usually do some research online and read a few blogs and see how people actually found that sizing to come, came out in reality. Um, once I've decided what size I think I should be based on the pattern and based on other people's experience, I usually trace the pattern out in the size I think is best using Burda tracing paper, that's my favourite tracing paper, and then make any adjustments I need. So I usually, for long sleeves, I make um, a longer, I usually lengthen them because I've got quite long arms. And again, for my body, I've got a long body, so I have to lengthen there. And I usually make those tweaks in the tracing paper and then try the pattern out. So the original pattern stays immaculate in case I need to tweak it anymore or re redo my, redo my um, tracing paper or in case I want to make for someone else in a different size. So that, I like printed pattern because it's all, all there in one envelope um, with the basics you can use over and over again. The final question, which I thought was a good one to end on, is what am I working on at the moment? So I'm filming this vlog on 1st of May, and um, today uh, marks the start of Me Made May on Instagram. 
and Me Made Mo is an initiative run by So So Blog. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but um, basically what it is is um, uh, anyone online um, on Instagram who makes their own clothes, makes um, who wants to join in, makes a pledge to do something in May. For example, wear one item of Me Made clothing every day. And um, so I, I'm joining this year, it's my second year joining in, and I've made two pledges. The first one is to wear um, a Me Made item every day, but because I've been doing that since the lockdown began, because it's sort of helped me feel a bit nicer and um, maybe going to give me a reason to kind of sort of get ready in the morning rather than lounging in pyjamas all day, um, I thought I'd up the ante for Me Made May. So what I've decided to do is not only wear one item of Me Made clothing every day, but I'm going to try and mix it up so each day in the week I would like to wear um, an item by a different pattern company. And I'm hoping that will encourage me to get everything out of my wardrobe and really make sure I kind of am using it and wearing it by um, just mixing up on a daily basis rather than sort of always going back to the same staples. So that's my plan. My second pledge is um, to look in my wardrobe this month and find any items that I'm not really wearing, either because they don't fit um, so well or because they're not really me. So last night I kind of got started and I adjusted the buttons on a dungaree dress because I felt it was sitting a bit low. And my next project is um, refashioning a skirt. So that's what I'm working at the moment. It's over here. So this, um, is which I've started taking apart, is the um, estuary skirt by So Liberated. And it was my first version I made of it. And it's in quite a thick um, linen cotton blend fabric. And I made it a midi length. And I'll put up a picture of it here. Um, and I, I really love the skirt, but it doesn't really feel like me when I wear it. And I haven't really got it on my wardrobe much. And when I do wear it, I just don't feel right. So I thought, um, rather than it sitting in my wardrobe and not really having any use, I'd try and refashion it this month and make it into something that I will wear more often. So. I've started on picking it, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it, but that's my current project. I also um, have ordered a couple of fabrics online, which I'm hoping are going to arrive soon, I meant really, really lovely ones, um, and I'm hoping I'll be able to talk about those very soon when I film my um, May fabric haul vlog. So um, please do check in for that when that's, um, when that's posted. I'd love to share with you the fabrics and my other projects I've got planned for May. Um, so that kind of brings me to the end of the vlog. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you'd like to see more of what I'm planning to make and my makes, then please do subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, I would love you to um, drop me a line underneath the vlog. Thank you so much for watching again and have a great day. Bye bye.